Thanks for, for all being here. This is, uh, this is a really cool conference and I've had a ton of fun. I hope you all have as well. So uh, I'm going to be giving my talk today on using Vue for your IoT solution. And there are some really cool advantages to using Vue, which we will get into. A little bit about me. Um, I am the JavaScript and AWS practice lead at DevIQ. We are a boutique consulting firm that creates custom solutions. We have done a lot of work with uh, IoT interfaces. Um, we control both outdoor and indoor lighting. And one of my favorite parts about IoT is if you guys know the satisfaction of when you wire up a button and your modal works, how great that feels. Well, just imagine how great it feels when you click the button and then a light in the real world actually turns on. It is the greatest feeling for a developer ever. All right, so let's talk about the IoT process real quick. This is a high level landscape. <clears throat> so usually out in the real world, you'll have some sort of device like a light. You've got to figure out how to get that light information all the way to the consumer's front end browser. So usually that will happen with, uh, the first step is an internet gateway or something that can connect to that IoT device and expose it to the internet. Next, you might use something like AWS IoT Core, which is really cool. It's got a ton of functionality for you out of the box. Uh, just to pause here for a moment, uh, one of the advantages to using something like AWS IoT Core is that you're creating a digital twin or a device shadow in the cloud. It is a virtual representation of the physical state of the light in the real world. Then you might have some business logic that sits on top of that that you use to eventually expose that to your front end web application. So let's say a, a, a user comes and uh, they log in and now you've got to get all of this IOT state to their front end browser. Well, you'll serve that up and uh, one thing I want to point out here is that this is a relatively large object. It's been simplified, but a lot of times when you're talking about very complex IoT devices, there's a lot of metadata. And you want to differentiate between the things in your metadata that change frequently, like the value of that light, versus things that don't change, like lat long, what types of units your, your value is in. Uh, what type of device it is. Those things are static and don't typically change. So let's store that in Pina. So the first thing, obviously, we've all learned a lot about Pina. I took Daniel's class uh, two days ago, so I guess now I'm an expert in Pina, so that's kind of cool. Um, so you make your fetch request, and then it's as simple as just saving it to this new device's state in Pina. You can see this is a screenshot of all of that metadata that, that now lives in our state. Now the trick with IoT devices, and this is where things can get complicated. <clears throat> You've got your initial state, but updates can happen. Things in the real world can happen to that IoT device. So you have to create a stream of that data where you can push updates to your front end, uh, front end browser. So let's say we've got our client app and then boom, we got a light update. Maybe another user just did something to that light. Maybe there was a device connection error. Maybe you know, there's some sort of problem. One thing to keep in mind that I mentioned uh, before, when you're with your streaming data, you want to keep that as light as possible. You want to keep those messages very concise because 
as your app scales, you're gonna be getting a lot of these things. A lot of these things are gonna be coming through and you want them to be as simple as possible to manage. So in this case, we've got this device ID and we've got a brand new value for that device ID. So we'll create another action in Pina to update, uh, update that device. We pass in this brand new message. We go to our state. We find the existing object that lives in state, and then we update it. So you can see now in our state, our value has changed. And this is why view is an excellent solution to your IoT problem because you get that free view reactivity right out of the box. Your UI can immediately change based on the fact that you just updated your state. So you get a ton of functionality just by the fact that you use view where some of the frameworks, you might have to do a couple extra layers in order to uh, properly show that change in your UI. So the point I, I would like to, uh, to, to all grasp here is that Pina can be the source of truth for the state of your IoT devices. And it's actually a very similar pattern to what we were doing with the, AO, uh, the AWS IoT core. We were creating a cloud device shadow, a virtual representation of all of our physical devices. And we're cascading that shadow now into Pina. So we're creating a shadow of a shadow. And that way, your front end web application has a very close source of truth for all of their data that it can instantly read. You can really do whatever you want to do with it on your front end, front -end web application. And that's all I got. Um, obviously, these are pretty short talks. Um, if you're curious about more IoT stuff, I love talking about it. So please come find me, uh, look me up on LinkedIn, Bill DevIQ, and thank you.